What's going on, guys? Show enough the king here, coming to you live from the man cave. Just thought I'd do a change of scenery. All right, so the results are in. This new death battle is out, and I've watched it. I'm going to give you my impressions on the battle. And before I begin, I like to say, I told you so. I fucking told you. Screw attack once again. Screw over everything. You know, um, and again, this is not coming from an anime junkie, even though I am an anime junkie. Like, I love Avatar just as much as I love anime. But yet again, Screw Attack finds a way to take data and just bend it in their favor of whoever they want to win. Now, I will admit that they did come up with some good points that I didn't realize at first. Namely, one, apparently. Toph can sense Earth even when the person is not touching the ground. They mentioned that at the end of the death battle, and it was confirmed by the uh, pop-up video that they used to do for the original Avatar series after the original run. And it did say clear as day that Toph can sense Earth even if it's not on the ground. Okay, I'll give you that. Now, here's the problem that I have. And what I'm going to actually do is with the help of my handy dandy cell phone, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you guys parts of the actual fight itself. And then I'm going to give you my problem with the overall fight in, in general. Now, I've already started it and um, I'm skipping all the data points. But one thing that I did want to touch on in general is they took the time to talk about each and every single ability of Gara, And I thank them for that. Great. You use the Chibi Gara's abilities and you use the Kavakage Gara abilities and it you, you you mentioned all of the attack. Yet in the actual death battle, he didn't use thir he used what, twenty percent of his attacks? Like and again, I, I I'm I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that because you know that that in and of itself is bullshit. And then for Toph, they Basically make it seem like just because she can sand bend means that she's a better bender than Gara. Like Gara can't control his own sand, even if it's, and again, keep in mind, it's not just sand. It's sentient sand that's from his mother who is there to protect him. Yet they're trying to say that Toph somehow can bend it better than his own mother. That doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, this is 12-year-old Toph. 12-year-old Toph. So yeah, she even though she mad, she didn't you know she learned how to metal bend at the age of 12, she wasn't a master at it. And even if you say, yes, you know what? She mastered uh she mastered uh metal bending. She didn't have that little stupid wire rope thing when she was 12. She didn't get that until she formed the military police when she was in her 20s. So so how the hell is she using that uh, that power? At the age of 12, that's one That's one problem. At the time when Avatar was out, she had to have metal around her in order to use it. But again, you know, these are just some small talking, talk, talking points that I just wanted to bring up before I actually go into the analysis of the actual fight. So the fight, the, the fight starts off with her coming up in some sort of earth elevator. And keep in mind, talk has never been shown to be able to have that kind of control over earth to the point where she can create complex items like she, she she can't see so how is she creating art but again there's a screw attack we're talking about but okay i'm gonna i'm gonna let i'm gonna let that go so here here we are with the battle going on all right let me see gar's ultimate defense not working She's on a rock. Keep in mind, Rock Lee should be able to move at supersonic speed. None of that should matter. And this is where I want to pause. So here we are, and if you can see it, Gara retreats to his uh, cocoon sphere. For what? What does she do? She the, the only time that Gara had ever had to resort to putting the entire shield wall around him was uh, twice. First time against Sasuke, when Sasuke was getting the better of him because he activated Rock Lee's 
speed ability, and was able to land some um, technical blows that forced Gara to retreat into his sand cocoon because his ultimate defense had been broken. At this point in time, only thing that Toph had done is throw rocks at him. Gara's ultimate defense could was, would have stopped those rocks immediately. They would have posed no threat to him. None. But yet, all of a sudden now, all of a sudden, rocks can pen penetrate. Metal, bullet bones, all these different um, foes that Gara has fought. Have, none of them have ever been able to get through his defense, but all of a sudden some regular stones can? Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to believe that. Okay. So so then let's 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 get back to let's get back to the video. So oh and, and at the same time she also uses the magical chain whip that she couldn't use until her twenties, but she can use it at the age of twelve. And that's supposed to break through the defense? No. And then we're going to come up to another part that just really pisses me off. Where's the eyeball that's outside of the ball where he can still see what's going on? And this is where I'm going to pause it. So Tom now is able to not only run up to the ball, she's able to take one of the sand pillars and break through it and hit Gar out of his own sand thing. Now, here's the problem with that. Gara is a brilliant tactician. He is the leader of the, Sh the Shinobi Alliance. He is the Kawakagi of the Sand Village. You're going to try to tell me that while he was in this cocoon, he wasn't planning. He could have been doing hundreds of different things ready to fight Toph. And at the same time, he's not. if he already shows that she can control Earth, he's not going to let her get near him. There would have been arms coming out of that thing, smacking her away. He's not going to let her just run up to it and touch it. Come on, son. That doesn't make any sense. But you know what? It's a screw attack, so let's keep going. Eyes of loneliness. Whatever. Okay, here's the most important part. Gar is now flying. And he hits her with a couple of things. This is the most important part. Alright. This is the most important part right here. So Gara flies into the air. Shoots down one a couple of sand shower shots or whatever the hell that was supposed to be. And a couple of them actually hit Tom. But according to Screw Attack, she can sense any kind of herb. So technically she should have been able to dodge all of those according to them. But at that point in time, it actually, some of them hit her. Which means that if, if she is pelted with enough, she just can't dodge them. She just, she just can't. So, and again, they just showed it with their own thing. If she has, she blocked one with a rock, but he sent so many that she couldn't block them all. Makes perfect sense. Land a hit. Then, Gara grabs her with his sand. And we already know, it's already been proven that earthbenders cannot bend without the movements. You know, kind of like, kind of like in um, Naruto, where in order to perform stronger jutsu, you got to have longer hand seals. So how the hell did Toph control the sand when Gar has him, has her in his grasp? Makes no sense. You can't, she's not Magneto. She can't just, she can't just from a stationary position have her hand open and then all of a sudden the sand is controlled. She can't form seals. She can't do any kind of movement when he has her grab. But yet she can just have her hand out, and all of a sudden his sand just disappears? Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. Even Gar himself said, you need to be able to use your hands in order to control Earth. He had her. How the hell did she, how the hell did she get out of that? Makes no sense. But, you know, let's, let's continue. Yes, let's continue.
So he used sand tsunami, which should come from all areas, not just from one frontal assault. Should come from all over, but okay. Now this is the biggest load of bullshit. So sand shower hits, and she's apparently wrapped in metal. Let's. So I'm gonna pause it there. So Gara uses sand tsunami, and it all comes from a frontal assault to which Toph builds two walls around her, I guess, to block the sand tsunami. But because it comes from everywhere, it, 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 it envelops her in the sand. So what she does is, keep in mind, she uses the metal rope that she doesn't get into her 20s when she's 12. And then she uses that rope to spin a cocoon shield of metal around her? Are you fucking kidding me? So now, now metal benders can take metal and turn it into liquid metal to coat them in their body. Keep in mind, this has never been shown in either Avatar The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra. Has anyone been able to manipulate metal in that form? Yes, they've been able to wrap it around their body if it's a sheet of metal. But it's never been shown that you can take spools of thread of, of, of metal, liquefy it, and wrap it and case it in your body. And it's never been shown. But, you know, this is screw attack. So, obviously, they're going to give her abilities that she, she shouldn't even have because she didn't learn it till another 15 years later. Just saying. And then, this is, this is the funny part. So, Gara gets her with the sand tsunami and has her buried under his sand, and she manages to, while wrapped in metal, to push out of that. Okay, I'll give you that. And then he uses his uh, sand burial, grabs her with it. Again, Gara's pressure should not have allowed her to move. So even if he uses the sand burial and crushes her body, I don't care if she's in metal I don't care what you're in. The pressure alone would kill a normal human, especially if she can't move. There's no way that she can bend when you're under that much pressure. And how is it that metal somehow protects you from pressure? The metal is just going to compress just like the sand. It, 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 it makes no sense. At the very least, she would have suffocated. If it didn't crush her bones, she couldn't have gotten out of that because she can't bend because she can't move. How do you move when you're under that much pressure? It, it boggles the mind. But again, this is screw attack we're dealing with. People, they can make shit happen. All right, you know, let's, 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 let's go back to this thing. I'm sorry I'm doing it this bootleg way. I didn't want to go through the whole picture in the side and stuff like that. Should have been done. But here we go. Toph somehow breaks out of the metal and somehow the metal stops the pressure. She's not the school. She pulls out five rocks, people. Look at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna fall in there. Oh, we'll get to the till we'll get to the pillars. We'll get to the pillars. So then Toph busts out of rocks. She busts out five rocks and hurls them at Gara. And these rocks apparently are so fast they're breaking the sound barrier because these rocks are smashing Gara's ultimate defense. He It's to the point now where he actually has to use his hands to help move the uh, to help move the sand faster. Keep in mind, someone Rock Lee, who by the time he opened up the gates, was faster than the speed of sound. Someone like Kimimaru, who was shooting his bone bullets at close to the speed of bull, actual bullets, but then all of a sudden, now, Toph, what, 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 what proof do we have that Toph can shoot rocks at the speed of sound? I don't remember seeing that in the Avatar series. I don't remember seeing that in Legend of Korra that she can throw rocks that fast. I've never seen it. If that were the case, why would they ride off? She can just hop on a rock and get halfway to the Fire Nation in less than a minute. The way she's throwing these rocks, come on, don't make any sense. It makes no sense. Gara's ultimate defense has never been broken. 
I take that back. His ultimate defense is rarely broken. We've already seen the examples of people who've broken through his ultimate defense. Rock Lee and Sasuke because of their speed. It's just like in Dragon Ball Z. When Cell was going against Trunks, even though Trunks powered up and was so, so strong, he couldn't put a finger on Cell because of speed. Just because you were stronger than an opponent, if you can't touch them, then it's pointless to have that power, and Cell proved that. But yet, Top somehow developed, while blind, the ability to shoot rocks that's faster than the speed of sound and force Gara to break through his ultimate defense. They, they, they talk about how strong his ultimate defense is when they're talking about his abilities, but when they're actually putting it into practice, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. His ultimate defense should have blocked everything that she threw at him. Those rocks should have stood a chance to hit him. He didn't even have to move. And on top of that, if you're floating in the air and you're flying, just fly away. Fly out of the range of her rocks. And that's the point I'm about to get to right now. Because now Toph is building these pillars in the air, presumably to get to Gara so she can land an attack on him. We'll, 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 we'll see where that goes. Yeah, these are little pillars. Yes, and this is him getting peppered. And look, this is one small strand of sand that she's that she's blocking away. And that's all she wrote. He's dead. Crushed by his own sand. Now, let's 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 talk about this. Let's talk about this. So Toph creates these pillars so that she can get the height to get to Gara. Again, keep in mind, this is Gara, a battle hardened Kazakage. A battle technician. He has been in so many battles, he can learn on the fly. So you're going to tell me that when she builds these towers, he's going to stay in the range so that she can get to him? He could just fly away. Just fly higher. What's the problem? And then he shoots out one strand of sand. We've already proven at the beginning of the we at the beginning of the battle where he's shooting multiple sand showers. If he overwhelms them with that, they'll hit because it hit her. But all of a sudden now that she's in the air on these pillars where she really can't even really can't even move at this point because you're sitting on these pillars. So, if he's going to shoot one strand of sand at her, why not open up and shoot hundreds of sand bullets at her? She can't dodge all of those. But they only, she, they only allow him to shoot one, one puny little snake thing that she can dodge around. Come on. Gara would have had a plan for that. He would have shot multiple beams of sand at her yet again that she couldn't all dodge at one point, And he would never put himself in the range where she can touch him. It wouldn't happen. I'm sorry. It, it just wouldn't happen. So even if Toph has the ability to control sand, and I'll give her that, she still doesn't have the, the, the battle. She's not as battle tested as Gara. She's not on the battlefield making strategies. That's how Gara wins, not just with his sand, but with his ability. And then the biggest point, what happened to a sand clone? Even if she hit him, at that moment, he could have just used the sand clone. That's what he did with Rock Lee. Rock Lee hit him with the hidden lotus, and when he knew he couldn't get out of it, he used out of the sand clone. And she ended up, and she would have ended up crushing the sand clone, pop up behind her, grab her, crush her. End game. But you know, this is screw attack, right? And I know, and I know, I'm gonna have a lot of haters on this video, but I know we got some true people who can get rid of their bias and look at this in objective manner and just say that Gara's ultimate defense should have prevailed here, period. Nothing Toph did in that death battle should have been able to penetrate his ultimate defense. And the fact that he jumped up off, off the air and was flying, he had a tactical advantage at that point. I don't care if Toph was building pillars to stand on and jump from pillar to pillar even, again, they're making, they're giving Top these abilities that she's never used before. On top of that, I'm just saying, the whole 
metal, the whole metal thing out of the, the rope from the... That's complete bullshit. And guess what? Under pressure, metal can bend as well. Metal can bend and be crushed under pressure. So even if he used the sand burial, her body would have still been crushed or at the very least she would have suffocated. There's no way she could have moved, let alone bend out of that. But again, I want to know what you guys think. You know, I've been going on for 20 minutes now. This is definitely this is definitely longer than my previous video. By the way, if you haven't seen my post-battle discussion, I'll leave a video link to it in the comment section below or in the annotation in the video. How I don't haven't decided yet. But again, I want you guys to let me know what you thought about the battle. Were you on top side? Were you on uh, Gara side? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and thumb up the video if you can. So I can get the word out there so we can get this discussion going. This is showing us the king, the one and only. And you guys have an awesome day. Fuck you, screw it.